Hi, welcome back to another edition of our boot camp. Um, last night, as Tim Tam and I were out on our walk about lovely Manoa, um, I had this great idea. I had to uh, talk today about data frame access, how to grab objects out of data frames, and I also have been meaning to talk a little bit more about classes. And my great idea was why not talk about them together? So um, I hope you'll see by the end of this chat why that's such a great idea. So let's talk a little bit about object types. So the, you've probably heard a whole bunch of this mumbo jumbo, but let's actually work it out. So there are three atomic data types, as we've talked about, numeric, character, and logical. And the reason why they're atomic is that they're elemental, they're basic. You can't break it down any further. Okay, now there's also other types that we've talked about, factors, data frames, you might know of some um, package specific object types like phylo objects and phylogenetic trees or time series objects, things like that. Those are all derived object types and what they are are just basic combinations of, of atomic types, um, usually with some special attributes. All objects have class, mode, and length, so you can always find out that information about any object. Um, the, the length is, especially for any type of vector, it's the length of vector elements. How many slots does it have? And remember, everything in R is a vector. Names are optional, but often very useful. Derived objects now can have more. They can have attributes such as dimension, DIM, the number of rows and columns, and they can have row names. They can also have other programmer-defined attributes. So looking back at our data types, let's just play around a little bit and see how we can use the attributes. So if we make a, a matrix with um, and call it X, it just has two columns, a numeric and pi. Well, actually, they're both numeric. Um, the class of x is a matrix, and if we check the attributes, it has dimension, uh, three rows and two columns. In R, it's always row and column, row comma column. So there are no row names, but there are column names, a and pi. OK, good so far, right? Now, what if we want to do something a little tricky? and we want to zap those attributes. Let's just set them equal to null, okay? What happens? Well, x now is a vector. It's only just a vector of length 6. So if we look at x, it's just the, th the six numbers all in a row. And the class of x is numeric because the default object type is always going to be vector. Okay, so it's just going to set it back to vector, and it's a numeric vector because they're numbers. Okay, so we have the mode, which is the atomic data type, and if the object is a vector, then um, if it's an atomic data type, it, class and mode are going to give you back the same thing. However, if it's something a little fancier, a little bit different flavor, then they can it can have a class that's a derived class. So the class of the object is important because which methods are applied to the object is going to be determined by R by looking at what class the object is. Okay? So whenever you start working with a new package, you want to know what kinds of objects are you dealing with. And so a common source of error for newbies is trying to put the wrong class of object into a function. Um, you know, you continue to do this too. It's a common source of error. <laughs> okay, so what does this have to do with accessing your data frame? Well, let's take a look at the data frame. Here is our friendly little MyDat data frame. It has three columns and five rows. So everything has column numbers and rows uh, by default. But we've also given it names. 
and in a data frame, the names attribute will go to the column names. So we have species column, size column, and mass column. Data frames can also have row names, but we didn't bother to give it any. So um, how do you grab out specific elements of my data? Well, the way that most people learn the first time around is by index. So it's the my dat square bracket row comma column. Okay, it's always row comma column. Repeat after me, row comma column. I say this to myself all the time when I'm programming in R. So if we want to get the, the element that is in the second row first column, we would type my dat square bracket two comma one close bracket. Okay. Now, another thing we can do is my dot two comma blank. Blank? Blank? What's blank? Well, in R, blank means grab the whole thing. Just take all of those elements. Okay, so it's the second row, all columns, or basically the entire row two. Similarly, my dot blank comma one is the entire first column, all rows of the first column. Easy, right? Well, there's lots of other ways. There's the, the by name. Okay, so this still is a square bracket method, but now since we have names, we can actually use them. So if we have my dot square bracket comma quote species, then what that's going to do is grab all, all of the species column. Okay, so all rows of column species. Okay, here's another little twist. My dot quote only species will grab the species column as well. And that's because um, within the data frame, you can specify the species vector. Okay, more on that in a little bit. My dot two comma size is gonna get row two column two because column two is named size. The, another way to access vectors of your data frame is to use the dollar sign operator. So the dollar sign operator you use with the data frame name, dollar sign, species. Okay, we'll grab the species vector out of the data frame. My dot dollar sign mass will grab the mass column out of the data frame. Now just one note. Um, if you created a my dat data frame just like we did here, um, but you didn't create any vectors that were just named species or mass all by themselves, then if you type species and expect to get my dot dollar sign species, R will have no idea what you're talking about because that species vector is only inside of the data frame. Okay, so you have to tell it look inside my dot dollar sign species for that column name species in order for it to work. Okay? So now what kind of object have you now grabbed out of the data frame? Well, it totally depends on how you grabbed it out. And I'll tell you a little secret. A data frame is a list of vectors. What? So remember, we um, can build up data frames by combining vectors together. So inside the data frame, there's a vector. There's actually several vectors in this one. All together, they make up a data frame. So internally in R, a data frame is represented as a list of vectors. Now, data frames are special because all of the vectors are the same length, but that's what it is. It's a list of vectors. Okay, now keeping that in mind. So, using the square bracket method, what happens? What you get out is a subset of the data frame. So what you're essentially grabbing is pieces of the data frame to make a smaller data frame. So my dot two comma one is a single element in the second row first column. My dot comma species 
is the species vector. A, you're making a smaller data frame with just the species vector. I kind of, I call this the outside method, okay? Because you're on the outside of the data frame grabbing stuff inside the data frame, making a mini data frame. Now using the dollar sign method grabs a vector from inside the data frame, okay? What that results in is a vector. So my dot dollar sign species grabs the species column out inside of the data frame. So I call these inside methods. Um, I hope that makes sense. I thought, I thought that was pretty cool. <laughs> now there's also the double bracket method. And those of you who know R are saying, what? That is a list access method. Well, you're absolutely right. Okay, but remember, a data frame is a list of vectors, so it's legal. Um, what the double bracket method does is it grabs the first level element inside the list. So the first level element inside a data frame is the vector. So if you grab out my dat double bracket one, then you're taking out the vector and returning it as a vector. I hope that makes sense. Okay, now let's look at some demonstrations. So let's, um, let's take a look at the iris data set. We're gonna use that as our working example. And um, it's, since it's a built-in built data set in R, R comes with many data sets that you can use to practice on, uh, which is a really nice feature. It's gonna have a help page. So let's check out the help page for iris. And let me make that a little bigger for you. Okay, so it's Fisher's famous iris data set. He measured um, 50 flowers from each of three species of iris. He measured four variables related to sepal and petal dimensions. And it's really commonly used in, to demonstrate all kinds of various multivariate statistics. So you probably have seen it around somewhere. But let's take a look at it. So if we uh, look at the dimensions of iris, we see that it has 150 rows and five columns, as we would expect. And if we wanna see what the beginning of it looks like, just type head and it'll print out the first six rows. So kind of like a little preview. Okay, so we see the variables here. They have names, the columns have names. Fifth one is species, and then below are the data. So let's practice grabbing parts of this data frame out. The first method that we learned was by index. So if we take, let's say, the first row, second column, what do we get out? 3.5, is that right? Row one, column two. Yes, exactly, perfect. And what about Iris, let's try something a little fancier. One, rows one to three and column one. We get 5.1, yes, 4.9, yes, and 4.7, yes, very good. Now, um, if you forget, if you forgot what this was, what you can do is just test it out. And remember, oh yeah, that colon operator, that's for sequence. Okay, how about another example? Iris three, oops, third row, and then let's try columns four to one. Ha, so third row, okay, and then we're gonna go column four first, then three, then two, then one. Yes, perfect, okay. Now let's try using that name attribute, okay? So let's try iris, first row, and then species. And what that gives us is setosa. And first row species is setosa, woohoo! Okay, if we take iris, let's take the whole thing, species. And it's really long again, so let's just take the head. Um, use the head function to just grab the beginning of it. 
Yeah, and that gives us back setosa, a vector of setosa. Well, it's a vector of the species names. Okay, let's try something a little bit fancier with these, with take grabbing out the vectors. Um, what if we tried iris fourth through fifth columns? I think that'll work. Let's try. Okay, again, we're gonna take the whole vector column, so we're gonna um, just grab the head. And yep, sure enough, it did work. Now, why did that work? Remember, data frame is a list of vectors. So when you give it one index with no commas, it's gonna refer to the vector elements of the data frame and pull out the appropriate vector. Now we gave it two numbers, four and five, but no comma. So it pulled out vector numbers four and five. If instead we did four comma five, well, that would be row four column five, and that would have been a single element instead of the two vectors that we have here. Okay, so let's try the other method with the dollar sign. So remember we were grabbing out the species vector. Let's try iris and dollar sign species. And that pulls out the entire species vector. So what are these things? Okay, so if we check the class, we can find out what class they are. Iris, let's first check the name method with the square, braces, square brackets. And that is a data frame. If we check the class of the dollar sign method, that's a factor. It's a vector of factors. So you see, even though they have the same information, they're very different because these things are gonna have different attributes. They're gonna be treated by functions in a different way because one's a data frame and one's a vector. Okay, so just to make sure, let's check the dimensions. So remember that um, data frames have two dimensions. So yes, it's 50 and one, 50 rows, one column. If we try to do the same thing to species with the dollar sign, the iris dollar sign species object, it's gonna tell us null. That's because vectors, um, dim, dim doesn't apply to vectors. Vectors only have length. They have only one attribute. But yes, it's a length of 150, because that's how many elements are in the vector, how many rows it has. Um, OK, now, what about that double square bracket method? Iris bracket bracket 5. What does that pull out? Well, that looks to me like a vector. And if we check the class, Indeed, it is a vector, a vector of factors. Um, okay, and remember, why does this work? It's because a data frame is a list of vectors. So once you understand how these things work, things start to make a lot more sense. The behaviors of the objects make sense. If we check the original um, object, it should be a data frame, and it is. And the dimension again of iris is 150 and 5, 150 rows, 5 columns. Now, what if we check the length of iris? It's 5. Does this make sense? Yes, when you remember that a data frame is a list of vectors. So there are 5 columns or 5 vectors in the data frame. So the length is 5. Okay, I hope that helped you with your. Um, quest to master R. You're getting ever so much closer. So um, have a great day. Take care.